Hey everyone, uh, it's Miss Milton again, and I'm here today to talk to you about Nearpod. Um, Nearpod is something that's really cool that I use often. Um, <clears throat> you may have heard me talk about it or other people talk about it. Um, Nearpod is one of those things that because of the unprecedented situation that we are in right now, Nearpod has made its services free. Um, normally there's, <clears throat> it's a tiered, um, type of platform and there is a free version, but you don't get much with it or you can buy your own. There's a silver version. I'm a gold user, or you can get like the district level, um, or the school level. Um, I will have to double check. I believe we either are in the process of getting, um, getting it free for our school or, have already gotten it free for our school. So I will let you know uh, if you're interested. Um, disclaimer, I am a paid gold user. I pay out of my pocket for these um, services and it's a, oh, it's a once yearly thing, um, but I use it so often and I enjoy it so much that I pay for it. Um, so if I have a feature that you don't see in the version that you use. That could be why. Um, if you have a question about that, you're more than welcome to ask me. Um, also, I am Nearpod certified. So I have I've gone through the training on how to use Nearpod and how to train others. So if you have any kind of question about Nearpod, you're more than welcome to ask me. So that's my um, PSA on Nearpod. So I'm going to make a series of videos because I tried to make it all in one video and it was too long. So this first video, I'm just going to explain roughly what Nearpod is and show you um, the different things you can add to a Nearpod when you edit it. So essentially, Nearpod is an interactive presentation. That's it. And you can make it as interactive or as non-interactive as you want. Um, and as you can see here, it also links with uh, Google Slides. I did not, I've tried that once or twice and I haven't gotten it to work perfectly yet, but that was when it was newer. I haven't tried it recently. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, let me know and I'll, I'll dive into that and test it out and let you know. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on a lesson and I'm gonna edit it for you to show you all the different things that you can do with a lesson. Um, so, this is a lesson that I have not sent to my kids. If you send a lesson to your kids, then you cannot edit it. Uh, it. It blocks them from having access to the lesson because you were editing it. So this is a lesson that I have not sent to my kids. I'm going to click on edit. <clears throat> so here it, I mean, it looks just like a pretty self-explanatory slideshow. You can add slides, you can click on things and move them around. You can click on slides and delete them if you want. Um, you can drag and drop files here, uh, PDFs, PowerPoints, photos, and then drag and drop them wherever you need them to go. So I'm gonna click on add slide and show you the different things that you can do in a presentation. So you've got three big options. You can add content, you can add stuff from the web, or you can add an activity. So if you click on content, you can add a slide. So this is like a, a plain Jane, boring PowerPoint slide. Not that PowerPoint's necessarily boring, but just a plain non-interactive slide. Um, or you can add a 3D image. You can add a simulation um, if you're doing math or science. You can add a virtual reality field trip. You can add videos from BBC. You can add a sway, which is really cool. You can add a group of slides to be, create a short slideshow that kids would click through. You can add your own kind of video. So if you have filmed a video or if you've got a YouTube video, you can do it here. You can add audio. Um, so if you've filmed, done like a voiceover of yourself explaining something, or if you've got audio from of like a read aloud, something like that, you can add a PDF. Oh, that's new. You can add a live Twitter stream. I don't know why you would add that, but if I guess if you're doing current events or something, you could add a live Twitter stream. Um, so this is a way to deliver content. <clears throat> if you were going to do web content, like an actual web address, this is where you'd put it. And then the last one is an activity. So time to climb is a game. Uh, it's similar to quizzes. If you've ever used quizzes, um, 
or Kahoot or I think Quizlet. Um, it asks everyone a question and then everyone on their screen gets to answer. And then their little avatar person like races up the mountain based on if they got the question right or not. You've got an open-ended question, which allow, it just asks one question and gives them a box where they have a spot to type and you can set how long they have to type or you can set how big the box is. You've got pairs. So if I've done this for like a quick vocab review, you can do a quiz um, and you can set how many questions, you can set the answers, you can set how long they have on each question. Flipgrid is new. They Nearpod recently bought Flipgrid and um, Flocabulary. So you can integrate both of those here. That's where you'd add a Flipgrid. You can draw something um, and the drawing part is more than just drawing. So if you wanted them to take notes or annotate something, you could do it through drawing. Um, you can add a picture of something uh, like a diagram or uh, I teach English. So if I wanted to add a text, <coughs> I could add a text as a picture or a PDF there and have them use the highlighter to mark it up. Collaborate um, is kind of like a Padlet. It, well, it is like a Padlet or kind of like a, a live social media stream. So it asks a question at the top and then everyone answers all at the same time and they can comment on each other's answers and go from there. This is something that everyone sees all of the time. If you were going to do the short answer question, um, that is not something that everyone could see. So that's something only you as a teacher can see their answers to you've got a poll, you've got fill in the blanks, and you've got a memory test, which is similar to the um, to the matching. So these are all the different things that you can add uh, and make it as interactive or as not interactive as you want. Uh, I'll do an, another couple of videos and explain and go through the different modes for Nearpod. You've got, I'll go ahead and save and exit and give you a quick overview. So on that same lesson, you've got live lesson, you've got student paste, and then you can preview. And those are some different modes that you could use Nearpod in. If this is something that interests you, please reach out and let me know.